Welcome to our episode of Revenue Chat. Today we have Ken Dunn, a prolific author, with his greatest work releasing March 2016 titled, The Greatest Prospector in the World. Ken says, lead with innovation, think with ingenuity, and live with integrity. He is well in progress of accomplishing his big dream, which is the world's first hybrid publishing company that focuses on the author. Ken is going to help us understand vision casting and divulge some sales secrets next on Revenue Chat. Hi, everyone. This is Tony Dierso with Revenue Chat, brought to you by the book, Easy Sales Procedures. With us, we have Ken Dunn, a prolific author, with his fifth book coming out in March 2016, titled The Greatest Prospector in the World, which is destined to be his best work. Ken is an international consultant, speaker, sales trainer, and a passionate advocate and blogger for the publishing industry. After spending 14 years in investigative and tactical policing, Ken honed deep organization and leadership skills and also sparked an entrepreneurial fire that lay deep inside. He founded Next Century Publishing, which is dubbed by Publishers Weekly, as one of the fastest growing hybrid book publishing companies in the United States. He also founded Reader's Legacy, a platform where authors and book lovers come together to discuss their own virtual libraries. Joe Weikert, a legend in publishing, noted that Reader's Legacy is to Goodreads like Facebook was to MySpace. Companies change the way people write, read, and experience books through their unique aspects. One of Ken's sites is readerslegacy.com. Ken is going to help you identify core skills, understand the importance of vision casting, how to create success in sales, and how to lead yourself before you begin to lead others. Let's bring him on. Hello, Ken. How are you? I'm doing great, my friend. How are you today? I'm doing good. Ken, thanks for taking the time to have this chat with us on Revenue Chat. Uh, It's a pleasure to be here. Cool. I understand you're out on location right now in Texas, so I'm glad we uh, were able to get a hold of you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm out here in Austin for a couple of days, and we're actually out here helping an entire company, a $50 million company, to understand how ev- teaching every person to be a salesperson will lead to better results overall. You know, I like that a lot, and I want you to tell us about that. But first, I've mentioned some of your history, and what I'd like to do now is just perhaps fill us in a little bit more on your roots and how you became an expert in this field, Ken. So, how did it all start for you, please? Well, thanks a lot. You know, it's funny uh, you ask me that question because it didn't start the way you would think, you know. And thank you for the incredible introduction. I, I hadn't realized how wide and, and large my bio had, had become in the last 20 years. But, you know, in the last 20 years, I've had a chance to start four different companies. In each of those companies, I've uh, obviously ran the show, but I've also, more importantly, taken a specific focus on the sales departments. And our companies have boasted sales in excess of $750 million. It's been an incredible run. But my background is actually law enforcement. I spent 14 years in investigative policing. I started out in undercover drug work, posed as a high school student, went on to a SWAT team. And for the last seven years of my career, my tenure, if you will, I uh, I was an interrogator, and I interrogated major crime suspects. And that's, of course, where I learned my sales skills. That's incredible. Wow. Very accomplished. I love it. So, and I did mention your background in investigative reporting, uh, policing, so forth. But now you you mentioned that the reason you took to the publishing industry was it had something to do with um, past publishing nightmares. Can you fill us in on that? Yeah, absolutely. So here, here's what happened. I actually uh, decided, I read a book called um, The Greatest Salesman in the World by Og Mandino. And in that book, Mandino was describing as the the was describing the secrets to elite level sales in life. But I realized that what he was describing as sales secrets were also the exact same techniques that I had perfected in interrogating people. And I was so fired up about it that I started a mortgage company and uh, it exploded. 
we quickly grew from just one employee, me, <laughs> to 19 employees. And from zero to over $300 million in mortgage fundings in just three short years. That company got acquired from me and left my wife and I financially free. I went on from there and I got involved in direct sales, network marketing. I know that sounds cheesy, but I actually created a profession out of it and in seven years made just over $10 million. I traveled all over the world and I found myself speaking to massive groups of people, 5, 10, 15, 20,000 people at one event. And I would teach them these sales techniques that I spoke of earlier. Halfway through that, a friend of mine said I should write a book. He actually helped me to put it together. And then I went out to the publishing world, to the Internet, and I found a, what I thought was a reputable self-publisher to help me. Well, what I had actually found was a shyster. They charged oh. me over $80,000 for oh, no. editing and proofreading and printing and marketing. And they promised me the book would be a bestseller. What I actually got was a book full of errors, over 200 grammar and spelling errors, and it infuriated me. You know, I, I didn't mind the amount of money that I spent because you've got to spend money to make money. But what really frustrated me is after all the money and all the year and a half of preparation, it was still launched as an inferior product. I was so passionate about publishing that book that I decided I was going to go study the publishing industry. I was going to figure out how it's done properly. I found my own editors. I had the book re-edited, re-proofread, changed the cover, changed the name, and republished the book 18 months later with my own new publishing company. And of course, that book's gone on to sell 100,000 copies, and now I'm just about to launch my fifth book. I'm very impressed, and as a a fellow author and book writer, I understand what it takes to get a book and to get a book out. And my hat's off to you. That is very impressive. So you have a publishing company. Now, can you give us a little bit of information just to separate what's the difference between that and the reader's legacy? Oh, I'd love to. So I started a publishing company, and I started helping authors to publish great books. But I, I found that most authors don't understand marketing. And I didn't realize it, but I had built in that eight years this massive following, over half a million people that had subscribed to my education about sales. They they bought everything I produced, and it was amazing. And all my books have been successful because of it. And then I was impacted. I, I saw a video of a speech that Michael Dell had actually done, oh, gosh, almost 20 years ago. He was speaking to a group in New York City, and he theorized that companies in the future will that dominate their spaces will realize that it's about the three C's. He said, look, if you're going to do anything, you have to have content, content that people want. That Now, content can be a tangible product or a service or a consulting deal. It's, it's something you add value. And he said, second, there's got to be commerce. People have to make money. He said, but most importantly, the third C is community. It's, it's the idea that people that bind people together in an environment where you can add value, where people want to come to that environment because they have a similar interest, and you add enough value that they keep coming back, they want to follow you, they want to be part of what you're doing. Well, the companies that build those massive communities will control the future. And, you know, of course, as soon as I saw that video, I saw what was happening in my life, and I saw that there was a real flaw in the publishing industry. And there was a real flaw in marketing. There's over a million books published every year, and 900,000 of them don't sell any more than 10 copies. And it's because Ouch. authors are not marketers. Authors are not marketers. And it, it just hit me one day. I said, you know, imagine if there was this magical place that it was a place that anybody who loved books, whether you were a publisher, an editor, or just an avid reader, or a, an author, everybody wanted to go to the same place and hang out. What would it need to be? And it came to me, and I said, you know, there's a big challenge that's happening right now. In the last 10 years, the entire world has gone virtual. And now over 60% of books that are purchased on a daily basis are digital books, e-books. I read an article back in 2011 put out in the New York Times, and they said that within 20 years, 80 or 90 percent of books would be digital. And, and that made me sad because I'm a, an avid reader, but I only read the physical books. I love them. 
and and my one of my biggest prized possessions is my home library and I thought wow what if I created a community that was for avid readers, for people who loved books. I said, man, we could create this environment where everybody could build a virtual version of their home library. It would look like a Facebook page. And there would be a place on it where there were empty library shelves. And you could click the Add a Book button, type in the title of a book. Every book by that name would appear. You click the cover of the one you've read, and it automatically populates on your shelves. Or you can grab the smartphone app and scan every book you've got at home and instantly they're populated on the shelves of your library, on in your reader's legacy virtual library. And then I said, well, if it's going to be fun and interactive, it's got to be like Facebook. There's got to be a wall. You've got to be able to follow people with similar reading interests. Every book in the world should have a page. Every person could have a page. Every author could have a page. Every publisher could have a page. And then I said, if you're going to do all that stuff, we need to turn it into a big game. We need to get badges when you create your profile and add books and follow people. And every time you get a badge, we have to give them points. Just like the brand awareness and the loyalty that's been created by Delta and Marriott, we needed to become the first online social media website that would create the same type of value. And then I said, we need to create a book-selling website that's as big as Amazon over 15 million books, and people could engage socially and build their libraries, and the points they collected they could use to buy real physical books. And then I said, we'll need let authors advertise on there so they can advertise their books directly on the pages of the people whose libraries indicate that their book is the type of book that that person likes to read. And I spent over $2 million in three years, and we just launched all of that two months ago. It's called ReadersLegacy.com. If you love books, you're going to want to have an account there. It's free. That is absolutely amazing, Ken. And I did a screenshot of the homepage of ReadersLegacy.com, and it shows up on this blog talk radio display. There's a, there's some pictures that will display through, and it will also show up on the YouTube and it shows the first page, and I'm very impressed. On the first page, you've got Harper Lee, Stephen King, Tom Clancy. This is amazing. You have you have some you have the biggest names here. How do, well, how the, do you get all their what's books? Well, we've actually created relationships with all of the top distributors and publishers in America. There's over 15 million books for sale on that website, as many as Amazon. Our books are 10% cheaper than Amazon and only on Reader's Legacy. It's the only bookstore in the world where you can collect points for your purchases and your engagement. And I see here that you take Litcoin that's very clever. How's that working out? Uh, it's amazing. We've had over 10,000 people create accounts in the first two months. And they've added over 15 million books to their websites. Wow. Well, after this show, I definitely want to chat with you or another time, get my books up on there too. But that Absolutely. is quite impressive. <laughs> Very impressed. Now, what would you say, Ken, to others who are looking to form their own startup? Because you have tremendous sales experience, which is probably some of the, the guts of this, what this show is all about, the meats and potatoes. So are there hardships or lessons you could share with us and, and tell us how you successfully overcame those? Yeah, you know, it's it's uh, very ironic that you just asked me that. I, uh, uh, we, I write articles. I'm a featured writer with Entrepreneur Magazine. And they articles come out weekly on their website and quarterly in the print edition of the magazine. But I just wrote an article a few weeks ago about a technique I use to validate a new startup idea. You can just go search Ken Dunn on entrepreneur.com and see it. And I'm writing a series of articles right now to help entrepreneurs start businesses. And so my first tip to everybody is to validate before you execute. In other words, there, on that article, there are very specific techniques that you can validate if an idea is going to work before you invest any time or money in that idea. And then the second thing is once you engage, then you need to use the power of vision casting to ensure your success. You see, building a business is an arduous task. So many people stop, quit, give up literally days before their imminent success. Now, they, they might say, well, my business failed because I ran out of money. I lost a major account. I couldn't make it work. But the fact is, if you look at the greatest successes in business history, they all went through times where their business sat on the brink of bankruptcy. The difference between success and failure in business 
is stay to itness or tenacity. And I realize that the number one way that all of the elite business owners in the world ensure that they will develop a never give up attitude is vision casting. If you think back through history, one of the most famous lines, speeches, thoughts ever given to the world inevitably caused radical change in a society. You remember the famous words, I have a dream. And it goes on and on to the people that come into our minds immediately. And what did Martin Luther King Jr. actually do there? He had a vision for how he saw things in the world, and he didn't keep it to himself. He gave in great detail his entire vision to everybody around him. And by doing it, he inevitably forced himself to strive for it. Now, sadly, he was taken from us before he ever saw it happen himself. But that massive murder was just another catalyst in the process. Now, today, it doesn't matter the color of your skin. We're all equal. And it's because one man not just had a dream, but he spoke it. And everything I've ever started in my life, as soon as I have my plan together, everything is set up and started, I tell everybody in the world about it. Why do I do that? I do that for two reasons. Number one, when I share my thoughts with the world, when I told you about Reader's Legacy, now you're going to look at it. The more people I tell about it, the more people look at it. But more importantly, the day you decide to do something amazing, start telling people then. Because casting your vision out before it happens is going to keep you accountable. You see, if you tell everybody in the world you're going to do this or you're going to do that or you're going to be successful and you fail, then you're going to be a hypocrite. Then you're going to be lying. And subconsciously, people don't even realize this. Back in policing, I used to study subconscious response to stimuli. Well, what you're actually doing subconsciously when you tell everybody else the way something's going to be is you are creating a force field inside yourself that will not allow you to fail. And so the story is vision casting is the secret to success by simply getting out there and speaking openly to as many people you as you know about what you're doing and what you're going to succeed, you are inevitably increasing the chances of your success. That's vision casting. It's very impressive that I can see that as working, Ken, as long as one keeps away the naysayers or has a way to, to deal with them because the people that have great ideas and that have that energy that have not gone forward is because they have surrounding them people who keep them down, who say, oh, that can't work or oh, you're stupid or whatever. And one has to segregate from those people or not, I believe, not divulge to them really too much because they can't have it. They can't handle it. But speak to those that are positive. And well, I, think, I would, I, you know, like, I would probably go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, just uh, just to wrap that up, sort of like like minds tend to do well. The only thing I would say with exception to that is um, I don't agree that your, your comment was pretty absolute. You, you said that the ones that fail, this is why. I, I don't agree that anything is absolute in life. And I do understand the impact, the negative impact that the naysayers and critics will have around you. But... I also wrote an article on Entrepreneur called Three Reasons to Thank Your Critics. And uh-huh. I like having negative people around me. I like having people criticizing me because three amazing things happen when, you, when that happens. Number one, it makes you thick-skinned. It makes you resilient, like, like the skin of a, a lizard. You, ha- you develop this really thick skin. Number two, it makes you grow. You see, we're all just energy systems in nature. And as an energy system, whether you're a flower or an economy or a person, you only have two settings. It's either growth or decay. You're either growing or you're going. And we only grow when there's a slight whiff of danger in the air, when there's fear, when there's criticism. So when you're criticized, it actually induces a desire to grow in you, to change. It's that proverbial story of the three-year-old who puts their hand on the hot burner. They say, ouch, and they don't do it again. They don't want it to happen again. So they change and grow. And the third thing, it allows for review. 
whenever somebody criticizes you, listen to it and, and use it as an opportunity to validate your business plan. Is there something that's causing that criticism? Is there something that I could make better or make different? And so in my life, I welcome naysayers. I love having them around me. I've already put my thoughts to the universe. I've already decided I am not going to fail. And uh, I've just listed for you three big reasons to thank those types of people. I completely agree with you, Ken. You're spot on. That is very correct. And I think the the point on that, to kind of correct what I'm say, what I said is, don't change your vision because someone says something about it or makes uh, it makes it seem small, but you hold on to your vision. You persist. Amen. You keep on. There's, there's where, there's where it is. And yes, that's very good. Yes, we can learn from that. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant stuff. Now, how can someone identify their core skills so that they know where they should actually really go in life? Well, well, you know, so I've written a lot about identifying somebody's core skills, their core competence, what makes them passionate. Anything that you're going to pursue in your life is going to be difficult. The right thing to do is to pursue something that keeps you awake at night. What are those things in your life that you can't stop thinking about, you can't stop focusing on, you can't stop pursuing? If you really take the time to really chronicle those things, write them out, think about them, it will inevitably lead to greater success. I got you. I know uh, some of us know from Napoleon Hill, he talks about the vision and envisioning it. Are there uh, differences or tweaks that you've determined are more workable or better working for vision casting? And how does that relate with what Napoleon Hill says? Uh, You know, I think obviously Napoleon Hill might be the greatest orator of that stuff in the world. I, I mean, his most famous book, we both know, it's all about your thoughts leading to actions and ideas. And so I think that regardless of what we're talking about, you only can be successful if you evolve your thinking. How does that happen? It's by getting the negative people out of your life, focusing on being around positive people who are smarter than you, more successful than you, because you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. I absolutely believe that. It's also by reading every day. I can't believe the number of entrepreneurs who are not readers. And, and and I can see a direct correlation between lack of success as an entrepreneur and their reading ability. You see, when you read a nonfiction book, especially about the business, the world, leadership, inspiration, personal development, especially the classics like Think and Grow Rich, you inevitably, in reading one book, are able to garner the collective wisdoms of all of the author's experiences. Because an author's not going to write a book about every day of his life. He's going to write his book about his best ideas and thoughts. And so you evolve yourself with every book. You turn yourself into a better entrepreneur, a better leader, a better person. Just read. That's so true. That's so true. And you know, this interview has got me inspired on several fronts and points. I love it. So with this, with this vision casting and sticking to it, one and one's core skills that one has identified, you can now move forward and create a success in sales, success in your business or your your enterprise. Is that right? That's absolutely right. Well, let me give it to you a different way. Any success you're going to have is going to happen because of sales. That's the way I would look at it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sales is everywhere. We have what we have because of sales. Our car, our clothes, our computers, everything. It's all because of sales. Sales Absolutely. makes the world go wrong. Absolutely. Now, you you have a very interesting comment that you've made before about to lead your you have to know how to lead yourself before leading others. Can you expand on that, please? What I teach salespeople all over the world today is that people will buy from you only if they know you, like you, and trust you. Now, obviously, let's keep that in perspective. Somebody who's going to the grocery store to spend $100 on their wares and needs for the week isn't going to walk up to the counter and ask about you know, ask to, to see the CV, the curriculum vitae of the cash register attendant. But we're talking about a bigger level of sales than that. Whatever it is you're selling, product or service, how, who you are is important. And such is true in leadership. 
if you're in the, a role in your life where you have the blessing or opportunity to lead other people, then it's incredibly important to understand something that I learned years ago. I can't lead anybody beyond my own capacity. I can't lead anybody beyond my own capacity. What does that mean? That means leadership. In all the speeches I've been given and all the chances I've had to talk about the subject, I've been asked many times to to define it. And, And my best definition has been surmised in one word. Leadership means example. So how you are and who you are and how you lead yourself in reflection in perspective is going to be how your organization follows you. And so the more stronger character you've developed in yourself, the more strong-willed you are, the more soft-hearted you are, the the more smart you are with respect to what you're selling, it directly relates to how many sales you make, how many people follow you, or how many ideas you have people listening to. And so really it, it all comes down to leading yourself, developing yourself first before you expect to lead others. So true and so very well said. I love it. Ken, your new book that's coming out next March called The Greatest Prospector in the World. This is a nonfiction or a fiction work? This is a parable. It's a fiction work. I'm so excited about this. My first four books have done incredibly well. They've been blessings, all on sales and marketing and literally have sold over a quarter of a million copies around the world. The book I read that I was the most impacted by was that one I mentioned earlier in our talk. It was Og Mandino's classic, The Greatest Salesman in the World. What I find is my biggest joy in life today is to teach people who are trying to succeed in sales that the most important part of the sale is the front end. It's getting people to come in the front door or prospecting as the world calls it. Because if you have more people coming in the front door, then more people will naturally close on their own. And if you have more people coming in the front door, then the whole process will become second nature or as psychologists like to call it, unconscious competence. And if you have more people coming in the front door, then more opportunities will present themselves. And so the idea is it's about prospecting. And I've done so many talks on this that have worked, but I remembered how incredibly impacted I was by a parable, a fiction book that Mandino wrote some 40 years ago. And so I decided that in honor of Og Mandino, I would write a new version, parable, on prospecting, on sales. It's called The Greatest Prospector in the World. It's based in 1908. It starts in Alaska in the gold prospecting days. And it's historically accurate. It follows the life of the main character, Laura Dunnigan, how she is taught that the skills imparted on her in her early years in terms of gold prospecting were also the secrets to elite-level sales. I won't tell you anymore because I want people to read the book, but I promise a a whimsical, entertaining, well-written story that will give the lessons that have led me to creating over $750 million in sales in my life. Well, wow, that's impressive, and I'm I'm definitely going to get on the list to make sure I get that book. That sounds awesome. And Thank you. When when it gets released, will we, is this something we're going to see on Reader's Legacy, or how do we how do we know when it's going to come out, please? Well, if, on Reader's Legacy, it's already there. There'll be press releases, and of course, Amazon launch. But we tend to focus all of our marketing energies on that book around readerslegacy.com as opposed to Amazon. You make more money if you sell books as an author. You make three times more money if you sell books on Reader's Legacy rather than Amazon. Three times is substantial. I believe, I think I saw where you give 70% of the uh, revenues to the author. That's in the publishing company. But on oh, okay. readerslegacy.com, even if you don't publish with us, you can sell your book there, and you get 80% of the gross value that the book is sold for. Very nice. It's a deal. I like it. In your book, The Greatest Prospector in the World, you've mentioned some sales secrets already in this interview. Are there is there anything else you'd like to share with us as far as sales secrets or for us as a takeaway for the audience? 
Well, what I would like to do is send you over to entrepreneur.com and look for my name and look at the articles I've written and find the one that says three sales secrets I learned interrogating criminals. I'm sure you'll love the thoughts there and it will definitely change or enhance your ability to sell anything to anyone. I like it. I'm going to read that today. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds excellent. Anything else that you like us? And I'm going to check out all your articles at entrepreneur.com and I hope it, and I uh, encourage everyone else to, this is very incredible for someone to have, be able to make that statement that through his creations, through his work, through his endeavors, through his organizations, that they've generated $750 million in sales, that is someone to pay attention to, Ken. And I very much is an honor to have you on our show. Well, I thank you for that. Well, look, if, if anybody that hears our interview ever is interested, I do have a personal mentoring program that I've literally helped hundreds of thousands of salespeople to double or triple their revenue, including an opportunity where I can help salespeople in an opportunity that I own to create over $10,000 a month in income working 20 hours a week. Very nice. And where would we find out about that mentoring program, please? KenDunn.org. And that's done as D-U-N-N. That's it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, this has been a very inspiring interview. I've been in sales and marketing for many years. I've written a couple of books, but there's always more to learn. And every time I speak with someone, it's amazing. I'm always, little lights go off and I get sparked and I get enthused and there's even more. It's like, no matter how big one thinks their universe is, it just keeps getting bigger. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, there I you. agree with you. Very inspiring. Well, anything else uh, that you'd like our audience to know before we nah, wrap this just up? A, just I'm I'm really uh, humbled to to have had the opportunity to be here with you. I've listened to your uh, podcast in the past, and you're very good at what you do. And, and I just want to personally thank you for uh, letting me be your guest. Ah, uh, well, well, thank you very much, Ken. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. It's always good to hear some some kind words from our our audience and uh, the people that I interview. Again, it's been an honor and a pleasure to have you on the show. I am definitely going to look you up, and I hope to have. Great chats with you again in the future. Very cool. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Again, one Ken site is readerslegacy.com. And that was just a great interview with Ken Dung. All right. Thank you again and stay tuned to our next show of Revenue Chat. We're going to have Alan Weisberg, the founder of the School of Human Potential, who says, success is but a state of mind. Alan is a successful entrepreneur who built several multi-million dollar businesses within the IT consulting industry. Although he was living the American dream, deep inside he knew something needed to change because even with all his successes, he still felt unfulfilled. So he recalibrated his life and is now enabling others to do the same. Alan will inspire and empower you to live a full life in accordance with your sole purpose on the next episode of Revenue Chat. This is Tony Gerso brought to you by Easy Sales Procedures. Get the book Easy Sales Procedures for you and all your business contacts at TonyDurso.com. Until next time, and remember, you can make life better for yourself and everyone. Choose wisely. Hi, this is Tony D'Urso, author of the new book, Easy Sales Procedures. You know, in my career, I've made impressive record-breaking sales forays into real estate, collectibles, insurance technology, and other varied industries. My accomplishments include raising $3.25 million in a six-month period. Now, despite what we've been told, sales is an art. There are sales procedures that can be applied precisely as a science, but in essence, 
It's truly an art. There are fundamentals that you need in place that will help you with your sales, marketing, and business. Get easy sales procedures to help put your business into proper perspective. You know, too many people seem to make sales complicated. Hey, it's easy. All you need are some basics. In three words, open, agree, and get. That's it. That's easysalesprocedures.com. This book will endow you with the simple truths at the core of being a sales master and also contains salesman training drills that when practiced, demonstrate how to interest any person in anything. These simple procedures can be applied by anyone from any walk of life because in modern day society, every person is involved in interesting or selling someone something. That's Easy Sales Procedures. Get your copies now at a low price from EasySalesProcedures.com. Order enough for all your employees too. Here's to volume sales success for your life and business.